So Jerry goes off on her own and nobody notices. Um, Yamaki sends a ship that's supposed to get the kids out of there and bring them back to the real world. The Digimon Sovereign prepare to fight the D-Reaper. Uh, Kalamon uses his magic Kalamon powers to digivolve all the Digimon in the digital world to go fight the D-Reaper. Jerry comes back, but she's super creepy Jerry. Um, and then Rika says, we gotta go find Impmon and bring him back with us. Also, Kenta gets a Digimon partner. Marine Angemon. This, this is actually also very important. A lot more important than Gardramon. Rika finds Impmon, and the ship gets there, and they all get in the ship to leave, but it's leaving without Rika, and it's like, oh no, Rika's lost, who's gonna save her? And Henry's like, I'll go save her, but Rika's like, no, I'll go save her, and then he saves her, and then Takato falls out of the ship, and then the ship becomes sentient, and stops for him to get back on, and then they come home. There, that is the end of the second arc. I have been recording myself talking about this arc for eight hours straight. Why? Because I recorded and then re-recorded and then re-recorded again. Because this arc, much like the first arc, is very complicated to talk about, but for completely different reasons. The first arc was hard to talk about because I was putting the restriction on that I couldn't talk about the character development. Here there isn't really any restriction. It's just that a lot of plot changing events happen in a very short amount of time. I mean the first couple episodes of this arc are just like almost just pure nothing episodes. But some like important plot thing will happen like uh oh we've got to go talk to the annoying gecko mon and they have a problem and it's nothing really important but all of a sudden kazu's now a tamer so you can't completely drop the episode because it's like oh that was kind of important now he has a digimon or it's like we gotta go here and it's stupid motorcycle adventures but the episode's not completely skippable because now Beelzemon's all of a sudden born. So it starts off with episodes like that where it's just stupid little side adventures with a plot thing thrown in to make it relevant. And then all of a sudden it's like it jumps into um, the a, a long discussion about the philosophy and concept of the Tamer's universe. And how like Digimon and humans relate to each other. And then it segues into cold-blooded murder of a cast member by another cast member. So, <laughs> hope you didn't like that guy. I'm just having a hard time defining what this arc really is. Like, the first arc, it was kind of obvious. It was just there to set up, like, the characters and try to get us invested in them before they go on their adventure. While the second arc, it has a plot, unlike the first one. It has at least a goal where it's like, we gotta go find Kalamon and find the Digimon Sovereign, that type of thing. And there's got all this weird stuff in between. Honestly, I think this arc has just killed me. I have nothing to go on right now with what I'm trying to say. I, th I don't. I think I'm just gonna give a rating on it. Overall, I give this arc like a C. Um, like I said, I, c I can't stress enough how bad the first part is. The stuff with Shibumi is fine, um, but the concepts that they're talking about, I've already heard in like more depth and more detail in different sci-fi movies, so it just kind of seems very watered down from what I've heard before. But I know what it's trying to go for. The stuff with Beelzemon is just so great. Beelzemon is just such a cool character with a cool design, um, and it's setting up uh, a redemptive arc, which I think is really good. It's set up in a very um, interesting way from what Digimon's used to. Because here, his actions have permanent consequences. In the past, it was like, oh, if you if you do something bad, you know, it's not like it's permanent, you know, if you kill a Digimon, it comes back here, it's, no, this is your sin you have to deal with. And the part with the Digimon Sovereign just seems so, like, weak, like, all the Digimon Sovereigns coming together should have been really cool, but it just didn't feel as epic as it should have been following the Beelzemon thing. And the fact that it just dives right back into exposition just kind of kills a lot of momentum. I personally don't like that part that much. It to me just seems really kind of boring, except for the stuff with Creepy Jerry. That's really good. But all this exposition is just, it's just a little too much. Um, I think it should have been spaced out a little bit more, but don't put it after the Beelzemon fight. Put it before with like Shibumi explaining 
like how all the Digimon fear the D Reaper. Um, and then have the children try to go up to the Digimon Sovereign saying, Oh, we know about the D Reaper and we're here to help. And the evil Digimon Sovereign's like, No, I don't trust humans. And I just really, really want to move on now to the third arc. Because the third arc, I think, is the best arc in this season and therefore in the series. Well, it's it's almost the best arc. Because in the first arc, um, it had a lot of good character moments that I really enjoyed. My big problem with it was that it didn't really have a clear set, like, villain or plot. So it seemed like the show was just kind of spinning its wheels a little bit. Um, and then in the second arc, you had a plot and, like, a lot of big epic stuff happened. Um, that I also really liked. Um, but it didn't have some of the character driven scenes that kind of endeared me to the first arc as much. The third arc, I think, has a very good balance of both arcs. It's got a clear villain, it's got some big moments, but it also has a lot of good character, like, driven scenes. I um, mean, very good interactions, especially with the parents we're going to see this uh, arc. So the ship that the kids came back and sinks back down into the digital world. Um, but everyone's really happy to be back. Um, except for Jerry, who's really not feeling too good. Or looking too good. Also, her parents didn't come pick her up because her dad's mad at her for running away to go to the digital world. So Takato says he's gonna go take her home, but, um, he also feels very, uh, remorseful for bringing her along because of the fact she lost Leomon. And he kind of just lays his heart out to her. Um, in a very emotionally driven scene. Um, but Jerry just responds by reading the ingredients on this box of food she has in her hand. Yeah, there's something definitely wrong with Jerry over here. But other than that, everything seems fine, I guess, until everyone wakes up the next morning and they realize that the D-Reaper has managed to invade the human world and is consuming everything like the blob. So now it's up to everybody to try to figure out a way to stop it. And when I mean everybody, I just don't mean all the kids that have Digimon. I mean just about everybody. Yamaki, Riley, the Monster Makers, Henry's dad, I think Takato's parents do something at some point. All the Digimon Sovereign at one point. You can definitely tell this season is trying to go big with its ending. So we see stuff like the kids, you know, uniting with each other to go try to fight the D-Reaper. And while the adults try to think of a plan, while the military just tries to go and blow stuff up. We have scenes of a guilt-ridden Impmon trying to find his, uh, those two kids that he ha that we saw in the flashback that are his tamers. But they moved temporarily because of the attack, so Impmon's gotta go track them down. Um, also, we get these lovely scenes with Jerry. How better now? How better now? Hmm. Nothing wrong with that, I guess. So our heroes try to confront the D-Reaper for the first time, but get chased off by these things. I, I refer to them as Sentinels. They're just these, uh, like, little creatures that the D-Reaper creates to attack things for it. So the kids regroup and bake bread, uh, 